built this tent Steps so light, I barely touch the ground Everybody wants to know how Brick by brick, I put them in the ground Walk, walk like I built, walk, walk, walk like I built this I do it for my people, family business Yeah The recap for week number two of this cut. Now what I did was made a list of some talking points that I would go over so this video will be more organized, short and sweet and to the point so you guys can get as much as possible out of this video. First thing I want to go over is for any new subscribers, and I don't mention this a lot and that's my fault, but I am 5'10 and a half, almost 5'11, so hopefully that helps you put in perspective my you know, height to weight ratio, just so you know where I am in that. Second point I want to talk about, and this can go for anyone who's struggling with, you know, you're get obsessed with numbers on the scale, you're worried, it goes up or down one way, the fluctuating. I used to be that way, so I totally understand, but the reason for this cut is that I am not afraid of the number on the scale. Yes, it's the heaviest that I've been ever, but I am not afraid of the number at all because I know that I can come back to this number but look better than I am right now. I can be at like 155 pounds and look better than I do right now in March 2016. That'll be, you know, months and months to come after I cut down the ball, do it the right way, cut down again, you know, it's a whole process. But no, I am not afraid of that number. That is not why I'm cutting down. I just know that if I work hard, I can look better at this weight that I currently am. And with that, I'm going to cut down and get to this weight back again, but looking better. So no, I'm not worried about the number. Hopefully that helps someone who is watching this. Don't be worried about the number. It's gonna go up and down, you know, throughout the week. But just look at your averages for the week and that should help you. So the last video you saw was the refeed day. Reason being that I did that was it's been two weeks, staying at pretty low macros, especially for my height and my activity level. So what I wanted to do was give myself a little bit of booster, which is, you know, emphasis of raising my carbs to about 300 from 245 to 300. Because carbs should not be your enemy. Carbs are gonna give you energy and fuel through the day, through your workouts. So if you do it properly, you know, you can use the carbs to your benefit. I feel great today, this is the day after. And as you saw in the beginning of this video, yes, my weight up went slightly, which was expected. That's pretty much what I wanted. No, I didn't, you know, gain almost a pound overnight. Like that, that's not, you know, your true weight. It's just going to be some water weight that you built up through the extra food. You know, everything's still kind of in your system. So it's not that big of a deal. That's what I was expecting. I bumped up my carbs because I know that in the next few days I'm gonna have a few max effort days, so stay tuned for that. But with those extra calories, the extra energy, extra carbs, that's gonna help me get through in the next few days. So that's the point of a refeed day. I'm not gonna be doing it all week, probably maybe every two weeks possibly, seeing how everything goes. That was the reason for the refeed day. It was controlled, I tracked everything, stayed within my numbers, and it's fine. Now I'm gonna be showing a few things on the screen just so you guys can see where I'm getting my numbers and you guys know that I keep track of everything in this notebook every single day. So in the beginning, I will put the weight for that morning. I'll do if I'm doing cardio or not. I'm keeping cardio the same, which is four days a week at 200 calories. Then I'll have my total calories for that day on my total protein, total carbs, and total fat for those seven days of the week. At the end, I'll have my average weight, my average calories for the week, and average protein, carbs, and fats for that. So now with this refeed day, how did I take that in con into consideration for my averages for the week? What I did was I tallied up the first six days, got the averages for my calories, protein, carbs, and fats, looked at that, then I added in my refeed day for a total of seven days, got the numbers for that, and then looked at the ranges, which you will see on the screen. So even with the refeed day, my calories still ranged between 1,999 calories to 2,055 calories. So you're talking, you know, that's barely a difference. So I'm still in the range at the end of the week. For protein, my protein stayed same for the refeed day, so I just counted that as seven days, which was 171 grams of protein. For carbs, for the six days, it was 242. For the seven days, it was 249. So it's very close. You're talking seven grams difference, even with the refeed day at the end of the week. So it doesn't really mess up your average at the end. For fats, same thing. Six days, it was 41 grams. Seven days, it was 44. 
So really no difference. So this refeed day, yeah, my weight went up the next day, not by much. It'll drop the next day and it doesn't really mess up with my totals at the end of the week. So just something to take into consideration. Now let's talk weight. So my average weight for week one was 157.4 pounds. My average weight for their week two is 156.4 pounds. That is my averages of the seven days for week one and for week two. So with that, you have one pound difference in two weeks. You can look at it that way, but then you can also look at, okay, my highest weight for week one was 158 pounds. My lowest weight for week two was 155.8 pounds. There's a little bit more of a difference between 158 and 155. You can look at it either way you want. I know that I can get down to 155 pounds and I'm expecting it to stay in the 155s for week three. So we are making progress. Might not be as fast as some people want, might not be as slow as some people want. Just you gotta do what is right for you if you're obviously doing it for a show. If you have a timeline that you need to get down to a certain body percentage of fat, then obviously you probably wanna pick up the weight loss a little bit quicker than what I'm doing, but I don't have a timeline. This is kind of a cut where I'm just kind of throwing myself in there, seeing where I'm going. For the new subscribers, the reason I was talking about sugar and eating ice cream in the refeed day is because I am fructose intolerant, which means I can't have anything with sugar, sorbitol, or sucrose, or anything that has fructose in it. So even sorbitol, which I had no idea, but it is in things like toothpaste and gum, so I have to watch out for that. Obviously anything that's high fructose corn syrup, I need to stay away from. Sugar, it's almost impossible to stay away from, so I've been keeping it anywhere between 20 to 30 grams of sugar. Obviously yesterday I got to around 50 grams of sugar with that ice cream. And I had the ice cream one because I wanted it and two I wanted to see how my stomach reacted. So when I weighed in at 156.6 pounds today, I was actually surprised because I thought maybe I'd feel a little bit more bloated because of that, but it wasn't too bad. So I'm trying to test my limits, what foods you know I react to more and what foods I react to less. That's just a quick update with my intolerance. Overall, I'm very happy with these first two weeks. I have noticed a difference in just how I feel, keeping consistent with my macros. My body is getting used to that. I'm very pleased with that. Macros are going to stay the same at around 170 to 175 grams of protein, about 245 carb, and about 45 grams of protein. Cardio will also stay the same for four sessions, 200 calories. And that's gonna be about it for the recap. Hopefully that answers any questions you guys have, but if you still do have questions, you know where to put them in that comment box below. Thank you guys for the continued support. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at G underscore fitness online. I'll put that on the screen and it's always down below. But thank you once again. It has been a great week. I love taking you guys through all of this. Don't forget to hit that like button if you did enjoy it. Stay tuned for the rest of the week. Thank you all once again. I really can't say that enough. Don't forget that once we reach 500 subscribers on YouTube and I'm close to 2,000 followers on Instagram, Make sure you're on both of those. But once we hit those goals, I'll be doing a giveaway. So make sure you guys are on top of that. Thank you guys. Again, I know I've said that a lot, but I truly do mean it. And as always, have a great week.